everyone, I'm here today with Christine and we're going to be discussing the different types of employment and wanker, how that relates to people with various neurodivergent conditions. And we're going to be really stressing the importance of it being okay to follow your own life path and not do what everyone else is doing. Thanks, Dane. So Christine, would you like to introduce yourself further? Yes. Um, first of all, Romy, thank you for having me back. Always a pleasure. Um, I am an employment programming developer. And um, yes, as Romy says, um, there are various ways of becoming employed uh, when we transition from young adult to adulthood. Um, and I have to start by saying, um, yes, I specialize in employment and employment types and becoming employed. But one of the most important things to remember is regardless of what you do, how much you can work, your personal worth does not depend on how much you can earn. OK, you are still a valid human if you are not able to work full time. You're still a valid human if you're not able to work at all. OK, um, there's all sorts of ways of becoming employed or volunteering or just participating, period. So let's start by saying your personal worth is not dependent on how much you earn. So that's the most important thing. Um, so with that in mind, for those of us who can work, when we can work, there's all sorts of ways to do that. Um, so as Romy said, there's a lot of ways of becoming employed. And you grew up um, as a neurodivergent person, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as a neurodivergent person growing up and being aware of your neurodivergence, for example, at school, um, you requested accommodations, right? Mm -hmm. um, you were granted accommodations as well. So there was a lot of ways for you to go through school and being able to succeed like your schoolmates. Um, and those accommodations kind of leveled the playing field, if you will. Does that make sense? Definitely. Okay, so in that same mindset, so the same principle applies into adulthood. However, as working people, there's so many different ways to work. There's so many, many different types of work, and there's so many different types of people. Um, like so, Boris Johnson. So, so, yeah, so in the same way that in school we try to figure out um, what we like, what we are good at, um, <clears throat> what we don't like so much. Um, once we figure out who we are and what we are able to do with the right kind of, of accommodations, that's when we start choosing. So, for example, um, when I was um, in, in high school, I really wanted to become a journalist, a reporter right um so i went to college i took a few languages and literature courses um but back then i did not know i could request accommodation so going into the workforce um uh, many neurodivergent individuals have already gone through school and gone through a lot of self-assessment and just trying to figure out what you do and don't like um, if you have not gone through that at school, there's a, a lot of employment resources uh, throughout the world, um, is my understanding of it. So much like in Canada, the US, the UK, I think Australia has something very similar and a lot of European, European countries um, have similar programs, just trying to figure out what your interests are. Um, Now, once you figure out what you want to do, taking into consideration your neurodivergences Thanks. is going to have an influence on how you look for work, the kind of work you look like you, you look for, and what asking for accommodations will look like. So when you're starting out, 
Um, it's fairly traditional <laughs> to go into a quote unquote traditional employment model. So uh, many of us start out in retail, right? Or, or in the service industry. So that's something that's very typical. So many of us will try um, those kinds of employment. So where you are an employee, either at full time or part time, but that's not for everyone. So for example, someone like me, um, who has a difficult time in busy environments and the big bright lights and the sounds, retail or service might not be ideal, right? So, and it is something I did try. I did try that in my late teens. Um, I'm not suited for it, but I did it anyway. Um, not everyone should put themselves through that because if your neurology does not agree with it, you are harming yourself. So it's good to want to come through. It's good to want to push yourself. But at the end of the day, is this something that leaves you exhausted? Is this something that leaves you fulfilled? Is this something that so again, if you're fighting against your neurology all day, first of all, how focused are you really on your job? <laughs> and how much energy are you expending to just try to do your job? Um, so those are very important things to take into consideration. So, so yeah, so Romy, did you ever, did you ever, try to work in a quote unquote traditional employment model like I just described? Hey, I haven't actually had a paid job before, but for my work placement for college in my first year, I worked in a school and that was, I mean, that's kind of a traditional one, except for with a school because the school they ended earlier than most jobs, I was able to go home earlier or to be fair it, it wasn't necessarily that it ended earlier it was just different hours because most people do nine till five the school I think was about eight thirty to four ish so it was just slightly different hours and at that time I could do it really well um because I wasn't ticking but now I don't think I could do it because my ticks are quite bad and um I feel like with the way my ticks are now, I don't think that would be an appropriate environment for me because I tend to have ticks where I snatch things off people. And if I did that to one of the students, they probably wouldn't be very impressed. Um, wanker. And uh, also I throw things that wouldn't be very good in a school environment. Um, if they're trying to teach the kids not to throw things and then there's me doing it, uh, that wouldn't really work out. Uh, but I was lucky to be able to change my work placement to an online work placement where I didn't have to actually go in places I did it from home so I, I was basically a remote uh, a remote worker after that and that was actually something that worked really well for me because then I could tick as much as it happened and nobody was bothered by it so that was definitely a big adjustment once my ticks got worse and I also think that working online working from home was helpful because I could take a break when I needed it um, because there were times where my ticks would stop me from being able to work. Um, I had ticks where I would just close the laptop for no reason and where I would scribble over things. And I could just say to them, uh, my ticks are really bad. I'm going to take some time to calm and things. So it was very flexible. And I think that is needed because when you have a condition, it's very unpredictable. You can't wake up one day and be like, I'm going to have a bad outburst of ticks today. It doesn't work like that. It just randomly happens. So beans, you definitely need somewhere where there's a lot of flexibility and you are allowed to go and have a break when you need it. Um, because it, I mean, it's just unpredictable. So for you, the in-person schooling was not necessarily a good avenue for you. Um, I was listening to you speak. Um, I'm just going to be devil's advocate here. So if your neurology allowed for it, so for example, if you weren't overwhelmed by the activity of a classroom, of a busy classroom, um, from my perspective, see, uh, I, I would say having a teacher that throws things without meaning to is an 
excellent way to start teaching about inclusion and understanding context and critical thinking see so to me that's how that's my perspective on it i see it as an opportunity for learning an opportunity for inclusion and an opportunity for everyone to learn only if for example your neurology would allow for such a setting see i i look at it that way that's um, a really good way to look at it so that's just my personal perspective on it i if i was um trying to help include a teacher and that was one of the issues that would be the first thing i would go for um personally that's me my personal opinion um but you made a very important point um working remotely um obviously is <clears throat> something that's <clears throat> that was somewhat inevitable for many of us over the last 18 months <laughs> um but it's good that you bring it up uh, as an employment model working remotely um so so in your case from what i understood um you had certain tasks to do but as long as you did them in a timely fashion you could kind of set your own schedule is that is that what i heard um a little bit i did still have the working hours of nine till five but i could choose what task i did on any given day they, i had a list of tasks to do and i could choose which one to do and that was helpful because some days i would be like too tired to do a certain thing or too unfocused to be able to do a certain thing there was another thing i could do um, and there's some days where I just could not socialize. Uh, so instead of making phone calls, which is something I had to do, uh, I would go and do a typing thing. So because everything for me changes so much day to day, uh, I, I had to have the ability to choose what I was working on on any given day, because thankfully I do know myself best. So what I'm hearing is you started by knowing yourself well, knowing your needs well, knowing your capabilities well, um, and being able to manage your daily activities well. So, um, so that sounds to me like something I called customized employment. So it's where you have a relationship with an employer where you know what you have to do. Um, and as long as you do the tasks, you get to do them in, 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 a flexible way right so there's still a lot of freedom and leeway um and room for you and your neurology to operate is that what i heard yes it's really rather than if i was having a really bad day with symptoms rather than doing a task which i was really struggling to do i'd work around what i'm experiencing and do something that it doesn't affect negatively and then wait till that symptom is is milder for one day and then do the other task so it was really working around it and i find that works a lot better than trying to work through it because then you just put yourself into burnout and make yourself really tired and i mean that that's not great that's that's very true um that's what happened to me because for after working most of my life as a business developer or a salesperson as people would also call it um, or a cactus. I was I was working, you know, in one of those big open cubicle environments, and it's really bad for me between the lights, the sounds, the smells, and so I burnt out. I burnt out in in my early forties, and it had nothing to do with my. I was more than able to do the work, and it was not because I did not want to do the work. I wanted to come through, but because I did not understand how my neurology worked and what I needed in order to perform, um, I burnt out because I pushed myself through it, and I did not, I did not have enough practice at the time um to know how to request for accommodations to to navigate that entire process and years later now i realize that <laughs> there's not a lot of resources to navigate those kinds of processes so um so oh yeah God. so burnout oh is a burnout is a very real thing for a lot of neurodivergent 
individuals because we are told that we're not trying hard enough our whole life. So that registers. And that's part of the internalized ableism that we all have to deal with, right? I mean, we all want to work. We all want to do something great, right? I'd like to think so. Um, we all like to feel purposeful. Um, but yeah, um, we should not measure our ability to work as a person's worth. So, um, so yeah, so I pushed myself really hard and that was not the right thing to do because I was not accommodating myself. Um, and basically all I needed um, at the time for the work I was doing was to work remotely. Um, so had I had this request in these times, if 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 these times had happened a few years ago, like 10 years ago, who knows, maybe I'd still be employed in the traditional way, but remotely, right? I'd still be working full time. Instead, I pushed myself really hard. Um, I'm burnt out. And and now I'm not able to work full time, which is very difficult for me to admit. You know, um, I'm a person who always enjoyed working. I'm a person who always enjoyed earning. Let's be very clear. I like earning. I like making money. Um, but not being able to do that full time is very difficult for me. Um, so. So there would there would be weeks. So <clears throat> there would be weeks, for example, I would not be able to work at all. Um, <clears throat> So um, earlier this year, I had a three month contract, which was a quote unquote full time contract, but it also had some space for my neurology. Um, so employed as a researcher and writer does give me a little bit of freedom and, and leeway. Um, the only things that were really scheduled were either the deadlines or, or meeting with my colleagues. So those were the things that were set that, you know, could not deviate. It's like, okay, meeting on Tuesdays at one, that's, that's when we have to be there. Okay, this has to be delivered Friday by 4 p.m., then that's when we do it. Uh, but beyond that, it's just like, are we, are we on schedule, really? I know an employer values me when I say, yes, I want to do the work. Yes, I am able to do the work. And this is how I'm going to be able to do the work. So right now I'm working, but I'm aware I'm not able to do full time or even try full time for a short period of time at this point. Um, so right now it's very part time. It's like, OK, as long as I've got this ready by this time, it's OK. Um, and that gives me a lot of that freedom. So that is a customized employment model. So earlier this year, it was a full-time contract that still accommodated my neurology, but also know I'm not able to keep up a full-time contract all the time. Um, so it took me a few months to recover after that. Um, and when I was offered this contract, I told them, I said, listen, I, I would love nothing more than to work full time, but I'm not able to. So here's what I'm able to do. And they accommodated right away. So an employer who really wants your skills will accommodate you and make room for you. An employer who knows you will support their business will support you. Um, I can't believe it took me so many years, but I was 48 years old when I realized that an employer will accommodate you as long as they value you. And that's very, very important. Um, and that's something we all have to remember. Um, and by that, I'm not saying uh, everything on a whim. Absolutely not. Um, you know, if you are able to work only four hours a week, then put that forth. This is what I'm able to do. And, you know, if those four hours are spread over like one hour every day, then that's what you do. And that's how you want to contribute. 
that's how you put forth. So it's a customized employment model. I don't like that. I mean, a lot of people call it supported employment. And, you know, in terms of supports, that could mean anything. Um, supported employment could be having the right ergonomically uh, correct keyboard and mice. That's one form of support. Another form of support is to have a mentor. Um, another form of support is flex hours. Another form of support is part time instead of full time. So there's all forms of supports, but I think it really comes down to customized i think the right word is customized what do you think i definitely agree that it's really beneficial when people are able to customize and tailor their employment to their needs you know you were saying some people really struggle to work full time i think that's because society has kind of ingrained us with you need to work clothes to be worthy blah 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 and it's because school says they're training you for the workplace and things like that. And you see other people working full time and then you're like, well, I, I can't. What do I do? It, it can probably be really confusing for some people. Um, and that can unfortunately really harm some people's self-esteem. But I think it can help to change the perspective from like similar to what you said, um, change the perspective from I'm not doing anywhere near enough to I'm actually contributing what I can with my needs and what I contribute actually really does help them. And I am adding value, even if it's not as many hours, I'm still adding value. It's like something you said. Definitely. Um, and there's also a, a different way to quote unquote, be custom employed. Uh, Self-employment is, is one way to do that as well. Um, now self-employment is not for everyone. Uh, and, and I'm saying that because I was self-employed for a few years. Um, it takes a certain uh, financial stability to start with. Um, you need some some kind of, you need something to fall back on. Um, so so it's 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 good in the in the sense that you have to you you get to set your own hours. You get to accommodate yourself throughout but at the same time if it's a business that you are running there are certain parameters within that as well right so um so it's to find that balance between the two um so yeah self-employment requires a certain stability outside of quote unquote the self-employment and also has to accommodate your clientele Right. So if your clientele expects you to be on call from eight to four and you're not there, um, you either have to have an alternative or reduced hours or something like that. Right. So um, there's upsides and downsides to everything. Uh, but I think the future of employment, especially for neurodivergent individuals, is customized employment, uh, whether it's self-employed, uh, whether it's volunteering. Uh, or it's working in a more uh, traditional employment fashion. Uh, customized employment, I think, is the way of the future. Um, and not only for individuals who are neurodivergent or disabled. Um, I think if we start accommodating, um, if we think of accommodations, as part of the employment model, I think it's going to shift how we think about employment in general. Um, and, and I think after all this global crisis we've gone through, <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of that, uh, more customized employment. Um, again, not only for neurodivergent and disabled individuals, but for as an employment mindset at large. Yeah, I, I really agree with that because everyone's brain works differently and everyone has different needs, regardless of whether they have a condition or not. So, wank stain. People have different strengths. People have different ways of working. Uh, people have different ways which they work best. People have different ways that they find as easier and then other ways may stress them. So, 
the thing is we're not the same so why is employment seen as a one size fits all it's not because we all have different needs regardless of whether we have a condition or not so i definitely agree with what you're saying there. <laughs> that's very true um in in i've obviously reviewed a lot of uh no, just, materials yeah. and and um yeah I've, I've, I've that's pretty much all i've done for the last few years um is trying to understand um this whole path to employment and there's a lot of barriers that are embedded in there um don't get me wrong a lot of the existing a lot of the existing curriculum is obviously effective for certain groups um so um a lot of individuals with um intellectual disabilities would not have been considered for a lot of employment had some programs not been created so uh, in those terms for certain populations of course those programs are very effective um especially for people who were completely ignored and not considered as potential colleagues um so those programs are good but when we try to apply that um as people grow their careers it does not apply anymore so and that brings us back you made a really good point there's a one size fits all attitude to employment and and accommodation and we really need to move away from that and i i find it so interesting that you notice this at as a young adult it, it's just that no one no one is the same so it, it shouldn't really be a, a one size fits all i think hmm, tailoring things to the individual is the best way because then you can get the best out of an employee if you're tailoring it to them um hmm, I, I think that's really important with the self-employed thing as well there are a lot of different things to consider i think you do have to have some self-discipline to be able to do it um and like be able to set your own timetable um and if you do have to take some hours out of your working day because you're experiencing uh, bad ticks or just something, uh, then you can add those on back later. Doing an online uh, working model, you do have to actually make sure you have motivation to do it because there isn't someone with you going, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, and also with self employment, I think. You probably it, it's interesting you do have to have some sort of ability to organize because there are a lot of spreadsheets and saying a lot of things to think about you have to remember to pay your own bills like um they don't just get taken out your wages you actually have to remember to do things that that can be really really difficult for some people but at the same time that's not to say that someone who struggles with those things can't do it it's just that people may need a lot of reminders um like maybe on their phone or something. Yeah, that's where I find um I'm gonna be I mean, your Sorry. I'm, I'm a fairly organized person. Um and I'm you know I pride myself on you know being able to it's like okay this is how it's gonna go. I'm I'm a quote unquote good planner. Um but yeah as you say sometimes you just need the reminders because i deal with a lot of executive dysfunction not all the time but i go through bouts where i can't function without yeah. my phone telling me what i need to do yeah. I, and 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 i know it seems unbelievable because most of the days i remember everything but it's just like i might remember it but it's like okay I actually have to remind myself, it's like, okay, start preparing Maddie to go out. Yes, start putting your bags together. I actually have to put myself those kinds of very basic reminders. So it, it, it can be done. Uh, it, and again, because you've already functioned a good portion of your life and young adulthood, learning what you need, um, if you know you go through periods that you are going to need those prompts just be aware of it and prepare for it um you make a lot of great points um for yourself romy what um you did mention that you were working remotely but um 
in the future, do you, are you considering other employment models? Like, do you think you're going to re work remotely your entire life? Is that something that you're planning on? Uh, well, I am planning to go self-employed. Wanker, I did decide that self-employment for now is what's best to me. I don't know in the future because I can't like see into the future. I don't know how, what I'll be experiencing then. But for now, I think that self-employment is the best for me because thankfully I do seem to, I think because I'm very moral and rigid, I don't like to deviate from rules. So if I set myself a timetable, I know that I probably will stick to it, thankfully. If I don't set myself a timetable, however, then I kind of get what's called time blindness and I'll go for ages without doing anything and then only realise after I've spent ages not doing anything. So I do need a timetable. Um, but thankfully, I can set that myself. And once it's there and I've said that I am going to do these hours, I can do them. Um, but self-employment, I think, is what's good for me because I can work in my own way. For example, if I do need a break, I can just take a break without like asking someone and then just come back and continue what I was doing. And for example, sometimes I do need to do things in a different way to some people. <laughs> not so much. Well, actually, yeah, yes now, but not all the time. For example, in the past, I had an issue where I just, for some reason, I really struggled to type because I couldn't focus. My mind would go really, really fast and I couldn't focus on typing. So I used um, speech to text to do work. And that worked. But if I was in an office, that would probably be a little bit distracting for the people. But like, that's why remote learning, remote, like, well, yeah, remote learning too, but remote working and self-employment is like good for me. And that's just what I've learned because I do need a lot of flexibility um, because my symptoms also change over time. For example, I experience episodes of low muscle tone, which is where I get a bit floppy. <laughs> um, and I find with that, I will need to lean against walls and things. But if I was in an office, there would be the concern that I would not have the ability to lean against things without people judging and thinking I'm lazy. If I'm self-employed, I know myself, no one's going to judge me for doing what's right for me. So you find the weight, you feel the weight of other people's judgment. I don't know. I, I, think, I do think that some people, um, and if your colleagues are not appropriately educated I think that people may worry that their condition is seen as a flaw when it's not for example hi peanut with what you were saying about reminders and things some people may judge that and be like well having reminders is silly blah 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 but it's not it's it's just something you need if your brain isn't automatically giving you the reminder then just have it on something outside of you it's the same it's just allowing you to do sort of the same sort of things as everyone else uh, and sort of compensating for what you struggle with. So, so it's interesting because for me, when I was looking for work in the traditional way, when I was still able to work full time, um, I knew I had a hard time to be in an office. Um, but I knew I was okay contacting people. I knew I was okay working from home. I knew I was okay doing all those things. So I would always apply for jobs that would require me to work from home. So do the sales calls from home, but then go to client sites and visit clients. And well, that's what we call outside sales. Outside sales is something that was very suited both to my skills, my experience and my neurology, right? Because working from home allowed me the space to tick in between calls. I didn't have to put up with all the sensory uh, 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 <clears throat> stimulus around me and I did not have to contend with that. And then just hop in the car and go visit clients. So that was and very suitable for me. Them. And and I would not have, I did not need to disclose, right? Because I was not ticking that much on the phones. I was not ticking in a quote unquote office. And if I needed to suppress, which was not the way to go, but I would have suppressed in client facing situations and then just tick in the car like I used to do. So back in the day, that would have been one way for me to remain traditionally employed. Um, one way for me to remain traditionally employed would have been to work remotely. Um, 
instead they were literally telling me well you can work remotely like twice a week from home and i was like that's not how my brain works <laughs> but um that's what i was given right um and back then i did not know how to properly advocate for myself um and i'm never going back to business development i don't think um i found my new passion and it's working for me right now um i'm never going to be quote unquote as financially comfortable as i once was which is unfortunate um but i'm still managing so yeah so now my the way i work has to be remote um mm -hmm. or short-term contracts if we're gonna look at something that needs to be done like full time on a specific project. Uh, yeah, but for me, for now, um, until everything stabilizes and I know what my baseline is in terms of health, um, right now it's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at termed contracts. That's what works for me. Um, it is kind of like being self-employed um and i wish i could take more contracts because there's a lot of work to be done out there uh and it's work i love doing um but yeah the fact of the matter is um going forward for me it's going to be remote almost full-time <laughs> and hopefully it will involve client visits in the future um so so that's how my employment my customized employment journey um is like right now i just wanted to say uh like a bit about not always it's not even always the employment style but it's the type of employment you go into for, for example if there's an autistic person who feels really uncomfortable socializing they're probably not going to want to be in a call center like it's it's like what you're saying um or in or just anywhere where they have to be around loads of people they're not going to feel comfortable with that so they um, may have to work more independently sometimes fair enough but as an autistic person who did really well in sales um i'm going to tell you right now one of the reasons why you, you should hire autistic people for business development the reason why I was so great at it was number one, I don't like small talk. Business owners don't like small talk either. So I would get right down to business. So that was one great thing, no small talk. Another great thing, special interest. Yes. If my employer and their product is my new special interest, I will know everything and anything there is to know about the product, the business, and I will be able to recite it upside down while doing cartwheels and in my sleep. So those are two things why. I, I did not know I was autistic at the time, um, but those are two reasons why I was such a success as a business developer, because my business clientele did not want small talk. I don't want small talk. So that was heaven for me. And yeah, just knowing everything and not just about my employer and their product, right? I knew everything about my client too. They felt important. So that was great. But having to do that in a call center, not great. Having to do that in a face to face basis every day, not great. But being able to do that on the phone from my home every day, awesome. So that's what I'm saying. Don't discredit anything because of that. Because I'm not good with the quote unquote small talk and uh, I'm sorry to say it, but the warmth and nurturing and friendliness that is expected of women um, or females in general, um, getting right to business is great when you're a business developer. But yeah, I, I think. That, that's good. You you have somehow tailored some 
something that wouldn't be expected of an autistic person and made it work for you because it became your special interest and you were in an environment where you could do it without being overstimulated. Why right. Care? Um, but but I mean, like I'm 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 saying that I was always overstimulated. I could not work anywhere for longer than two years, right? Just because the overwhelm would just get to be too much. So so yeah, so um Customized employment, in order to be able to get customized employment, it requires a certain amount of disclosure. Um, and that's something that we don't talk about nearly enough. Um, it's interesting that disclosure is okay when we talk about picking up the kids from school. It's interesting that disclosure is okay when we're taking care of an ill parent. It's okay that disclosure is okay <clears throat> when we go for a medical appointment, but it's not okay to disclose what we need to work. And that's a mindset that we have to get out of. Um, and Ooh. disclosure is one big thing I'm working on right now. Do you think that asking for accommodations in the workplace is fuck very different or similar to asking for accommodations in school? Um, it's very similar right now because we are still looking at it, uh, at it um, <clears throat> from the medical model, right? So in order to get accommodated um, in school, um, you need to have a quote unquote number of diagnoses, you need to <clears throat> have doctor's notes, and it's very medical, 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 medical. And you still need to have quote unquote doctor's notes, except as an adult. I don't know what it's like in the UK. Um, but in Canada and the US. Oh, Canada, oh, Canada. <laughs> you, don't, <laughs> you don't have to disclose the disability itself, right? So, for example, I wouldn't have to disclose my ADHD and hypersensitivities and autism and Tourette's. I would have to say, Christine requires to work from home as an accommodation. In order to perform, Christine requires a quiet environment and working from home would be a suitable accommodation. You don't need to state everything. It's more about this is what this person needs, but it has to come from a doctor, right? So it still has to come from a doctor. Um, but yeah, we don't have to say what the condition is, what the disability or condition or neurodivergence is. It's this is what is needed in order to perform. So there's that slight shift in mindset, but we're still expected to normalize if you does that make sense we're still expected to be normal the box doesn't exist so fucking step out of it do you not yeah who wants normal <laughs> absolutely agree i don't want it. it it's it is frustrating when i guess when people think you need to try harder to do what everyone else does we can't hold ourselves to neurotypical standards because we're not neurotypical we can't hold ourselves to the standards of the way someone's brain works their brain is very different to us so it why <laughs> like it, it just it doesn't work like that i know and i and i know and i overcompensated right i overcompensated so much and i know i'm not the only neurodivergent adult uh whether or not you are diagnosed um many of us still have that internalized um message that we're not trying hard enough and i know that did not work well for me no matter how hard i tried um i was trying hard enough um i was trying too hard um i tried so hard that it harmed my health and that is not recommended <laughs> it, it's the thing as well we only live once and if you're just going to do what society expects of you but it harms you it makes your life miserable 
is there really a point in that? Why don't we just do what works for us rather than doing what's expected of us when it harms us and doesn't even give us the quality of life that we deserve? I wish I had your level of wisdom when I was your age. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you're like you're an expert now, so I am. I am. I mean, I'm gonna here's put the your thing. Eyes out. Whee! All, Sorry. All my all my negative experiences. I don't want anyone to have to go through that. I want my negative and positive experiences to benefit um yeah. other people. Um again, I'm looking at customize employment and accommodation more as a mindset that accommodates and includes everyone, right? Because if we accommodate the most marginalized, so if I'm here and the marginalized people are over there, I'm accommodating everyone in between, right? So when we're accommodating for the most marginalized, we reach everyone. So I'm looking at it from that mindset, customized employment for everyone. Yeah, that's right. But that that that's a whole other TED talk. <laughs> Is there anything that you feel we've I, I, we've covered a lot of ground here, <laughs> um, and we've barely scratched the surface? Would you believe it? Uh, that th there is a lot to talk about in this topic, and we, we are going to do a series of videos related to neurodivergency and transitioning to adulthood. So this is definitely a very good start. Um, I was I was just thinking, I don't know. We need employers, not all of them. Some are amazing. We need some employers to change their mindset because I do have the concern that some employers might think that they don't want to hire a disabled person because it would be harder for them to accommodate them. But that's a really bad mindset for them to have. So, Wangstein, I, I do think that when people raise awareness of the strengths of, for example, those with autism, those with ADHD, those with Tourette's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, employers might be more open to hiring people uh, with, with these conditions, with these differences. Because it, it, it can be really frustrating if someone goes for a job, job interview, but the person who's interviewing them has the mindset of mm, it's going to be too hard for the company because that's not giving people a chance. Beans. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing, um, again, I'm looking at things from a systemic perspective. A lot of employers, and it's unfortunate to say it, a lot of employers still see disability as a liability. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of employers hire outside of outside organizations to hire disabled individuals because there is that concern about liability. So it's unfortunate we are seen as a liability to begin with. So it's undoing that mindset. I know there's a lot of companies out there that are trying to do better, right? Um, but once I start to study how they're going about it, very few of them are actually, actually have a viable, viable plan. <laughs> Most companies that are out there speaking of inclusion don't have an actual inclusion plan. So it's more for the image then. It's, it's, it's go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm just saying it. If a company says that they're going to be inclusive, but they don't have a plan to be inclusive, then isn't that more about the company's image than what they're actually trying to implement? Yeah, you know? that's that is unfortunate because as with everything that else, disability is as you know, disability, neurodivergence, it is often used as a tool to, as you say, prop up your image. Uh, and that's when we, we become tokenized and objectified. And we are still in that tokenized and objectified mindset, right? So it's still like they would hire me 
if I was physically in the office there all the time. And it's like, I don't need to be physically in the office there all the time. Why do you ask me to do this? Well, that's part of the job. Well, the job does not require me to physically be here. Well, everyone else is doing it. Well, everyone else does not have a hypersensitive system. Um, so, yeah, there's still that mindset of, well, someone else can do it. Um, yeah, so we are still in that mindset, and there's a lot of work to do on the employer side. And as you say, there's a lot of employers out there who are setting the bar pretty high in terms of accommodating and in terms of inclusion. Um, but the vast majority, um, it has to go beyond the image. It has to go beyond the message because what I'm noticing the most, it's basically the same message with a different logo and no actual concrete plan on how to make that happen. So that's what I'm noticing. And that's where I'm hoping um, to put most of my efforts in the next few years. Yes, the plan is definitely needed because if people keep saying we're going to be more inclusive, we're going to be more inclusive, but they don't actually do anything, then that's kind of pointless. So yeah, the plan is definitely needed. But it sounds really nice. I mean, everyone knows we have to be more inclusive. Everyone knows that diversity is a good thing, but no one is actually showing us how they're going about it. So I'm I'm going to try to figure that out. I know it's ambitious, but uh, I'm going to try to figure that out. Not on my own, of course. Yeah, I'm sure you can. You have a lot of experience. So anything that we can do to make things better is necessary and we all have something to give if we're passionate about an area so definitely wow and also, I was thinking, sorry go ahead also i was thinking as you were saying that about everyone having customized employment not just people with neurodivergent conditions it kind of makes us seem like less of an outsider because i don't know like i was saying some employers might think I don't want to hire people if they're too difficult to accommodate. But if everyone has accommodations and everything's tailored to everyone, regardless of the, if they have a condition or not, just what works for them, then I feel like people are less likely to see us as an outsider and, you know, they're just accommodating us like they accommodate everyone else. Very much so. You just pretty much hit the point. Right now, everyone is being accommodated because of the current global situation right mm -hmm. um so everyone is accommodated so it doesn't seem like an accommodation so but now we know that everyone can be accommodated mm. so now we know that and we know that a lot of jobs can be performed in a different way we know all those things so how is that going to look like going forward? That's why I'm saying I think my idea about customized employment um, is it, it, not an original idea. It, it's an idea other people have had before me. But I think customized employment for everyone is the way of the future. Um, and I'm not talking about chaos. It's not like, oh, I don't want to work today. I'm not working. No, not at all like that. I'm just saying more, um, just more flexible. Um, yeah, more, just more flexibility overall. Hmm. It's going to be interesting how the workplace changes in the next decade or so. But yes, it has been really, really lovely speaking to you today and hearing all of your expertise and viewpoints and I think that this has been a really important conversation and it's good to start off the seri series with and I do really hope that it helps people who are watching so I'm sure it will. Beans. Well thank you so much for having me back. Um, I look forward to our next conversation as always. Um, yeah thank you so much for your time and your care and all the work that you do you are a wonderful person oh that's so sweet thank you so are you and Weinstein and you have done 
so much in the areas of employment and inclusion and it's really important so i'll see you next time Bye.